All right, and then I need to draw a cardigan. You open your mouth and I just hear cardigan. Cardigan, I am wearing a cardigan. Hey everyone, there is a thank you and today I got something very, very special for you. This is Winterhaven Woods, which I will be playing through today. A really beautiful game I big back on Kickstarter. And before I will play that, let me just show you something. So there is a insert in here. And if you take that insert out, let me do that very carefully because we don't want to break anything, right? Like this, then you see that I got one of 350 signed games here. Um, which is really, really cool. I like with an or original signature. And there also are some art prints I got with my pledge. So that is something really, really special. So I just wanted to show that to you. Um, I'm really happy that I backed at this pledge also because it's a really beautiful game. And also it's quite fun. And um, so far I have only played the solo version. So I still need to play the multiplayer mode, but it's a really beautiful game and it's pretty fun. So, um, let me just quickly set up the game. All right, and that already is the setup of the game. So um, this is a drafting and puzzle game. Um, in solo mode, you won't don't have the drafting experience, of course, but you do um, have a kind of a simulation of the drafting experience because you always need to discard the card and you draw a new one, which is a really cool way to simulate that experience. And also the solo mode is a lot more puzzly, which I personally like a lot. So what you do, you play three rounds when you play solo and you first draw eight cards. Um, also, you turn over um, the top predator in each deck and you see if you can apply it immediately. Of course, at the beginning, you don't have anything to apply it to. What do predators do? Well, they can either hunt, as you can see here. Um, wolves can hunt. So um, animals left in the meadow um, will be eaten by the wolf. And as soon as the predator activates, you take it, um, take the card it steals or hunts, and then you put them at a 90 degree angle up here. And these are the points you need to beat at the end. All the points in this stack at the end of the game um, you need to beat because that is the predator uh, score, so to speak. Um, there will be nine cards in there at least because we will have to deal with nine predators in normal mode. If you play in hard mode, you will have four stacks here. That means you will have at least 12 predators plus all the animals that get eaten or stolen. The fox can steal one critter from the Yamato. The owl will steal one critter from your woods even. All right, so let me first sort my cards here a little bit because um, I usually like to have them in a specific order so it's easier to um, to deal with them. So let me put those here and that over here. All right, so now it's the um, plant and populate phase. Now I can play one card. So either um, we are trying to build um, several woods here and I can start populating a wood as soon as that wood has three trees. We already have the heart of the woods. That is a card that um, gives us one wood immediately and now we see here now we have here red scrolls um, up to five scrolls can populate the wood that is great deer must populate in pairs so these i first need to play into my meadow and if i have two in my meadow then i can uh, both move them to a forest so that takes a little bit longer and we see we have the fox here that can steal a critter um, but a deer is not a critter a critter is one of these small animals like squirrels um, so that is fine. We could actually play, we could actually play the deer, but then the wolf would hunt the deer. So we probably don't want to play the deer. Um, as long as the wolf is active, we probably don't want to play the deer. Um, then the cardinal, that is a, a, a solo card. You only have that in solo play. And um, you can put that into your wood to have protection for the critters. So I might play that immediately because we have the owl here, right? Then we have the hedgehog. We can put that in the meadow. Um, this one will not be eaten, but it can be stolen. So we need to be careful about that. And also we have then trees that we can plant here to, to make our woods larger or to create new woods. So that is pretty much what we can do. So um, I think I will actually really play the cardinal first here, just because then I can add critters here that have protection. 
Okay, and now, um, now we resolve the uh, predators. We do that every single uh, after every single call I played, but nothing really happens because we don't have anything in the meadow to hunt or steal. And to steal one critter from the woods, that one cannot be stolen because um, the card gives protection, and also to itself, of course. Now we discard a card. We cannot possibly play deer for now, so I will probably start discarding the deer, and then we draw a new card. And that's this is how the um, how the mechanism of drafting is simulated. Okay, so um, a rabbit is pretty interesting because you can only have one type of critter in your woods, um, but rabbits and also the cardinal are exceptions. You can add them to a wood of a specific critter type, right? So that is pretty cool. All right, so and now we populate again. So actually, um, you know what? I will put a double tree here. So we can increase our wood here. So now we have room for five animals. And you see we have three thrills, no, two thrills and a rabbit. So we can put them all in this wood and they will be protected. Now the they activate again, but they still, they still can't do anything. That is great. And I will discard the next deer and draw another card. Uh, even more thrills. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's just add a rabbit here for now. And then we can and also add our scrolls. Um, I will actually discard this one tree here. I mean, the one tree is good because it does increase the capacity of a wood, but um, in the predator decks, there are beavers that can steal your one trees. Not the double and not the heart of the woods, of course, but they can steal your one tree. So I'm gonna discard that. Okay, wow, we got a lot of good cards here. Um, so let's play that scroll, and these still cannot hunt or anything, so I'm blocking them from getting points and from me losing points. Then we need to discard something. I actually would like to... Well, we can play... We have five trees here. We can play two more critters here. So one scroll is one too many, so I will discard one scroll. Then I will play another scroll. The predator still can't do anything. I will discard the deer. I'm really blocking the um, predators at the moment, but I'm really lucky because I got that I got that cardinal, right? Um, otherwise, I would not have it that easy. Um, oh, and I can see that you can't really see anything, not all of that. So let me pull that up a little bit so you can at least see the scroll here. I think that should be fine. All right, and then I need to draw a card again. You open your mouth and I just hear card again. Cardigan. I am wearing a cardigan. Okay, so I will actually play. Um, I can play one more scroll here, like this, and then um, I will discard the tree, draw another card, then I will play the hedgehog and discard the deer. I skipped all the predator stuff now because the predator can't do anything, um, but now I played the hedgehog here, and now the fox is able to steal the hedgehog, right? Because it can't be eaten, it says here. The hedgehog cannot be eaten, but steel is not eating, right? So um, now with these two cards here, and these are all discarded at the end of the round. So now the opponent has four points for the first round. That is still pretty good for me. All right, so now we Turn the next predators over and also I will draw eight new cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you see now here that we have the beaver that can steal a one tree. Fortunately, I did not put a one tree here, otherwise it would be stolen immediately now. So that is pretty good. Um, also, let me maybe just pull those up a little bit here like this. So you can see the scroll a little bit better. Okay, so um, the fox steals one critter from the meadow. We don't have one and steal one critter from wood. They are protected, so that's fine. So let me first um, sort that here. So we have a gray scroll. They cannot be put in the same forest as the red scroll. Now we don't have a wood anymore. We first need to play woods, but we, we, have, we have two cards, like two trees here. That is great. Two of them. And we have one trees, which I will probably not play because of the beaver because that beaver will just take that from me again. But we have a lot of great scrolls. That's great. How uh, about two? Okay, so um, I will first play a two trees here. And then I will discard, um, steal one critter from any wood, steal a critter from a meadow. Well, we can now play deer. So I think that's what I will play. I'll play a deer for now. 
and I will discard the one tree here. Also, I played the deer, so they still can't do anything here, right? They can't steal a critter from um, a meadow because we don't have a critter here. A deer is not a critter. We And the owl can't steal and the beaver can't steal because I don't have one trees and I also don't have um, anything to steal in my woods because they are protected by the cardinal here. But that will change as soon as I populate that forest here. So let's see what happens there then. All right, so let me draw a card. That's a red scroll, okay. So um, I will now play um, another two tree here because now I have three trees at least here. So I can um, start playing animals in here because we need at least three trees. Um, also, I will get points later on for the amount of different critters I have in my wood. Um, and the hedgehogs also count in the meadow. And um, because the hedgehogs can't be moved to the forests, they just stay in the meadow. And also I will get points if I have at least 11 trees. So far I have three, five, seven, nine. So if I can play two more trees, then I would get additional points, I think three. So that would be, that sometimes really saved me. Okay, so then I will have to discard something. I will discard one tree and draw another one. So I'm still blocking the, the guys here, but not for much longer, probably. So um, the owl will now steal a critter if I play a critter, and I will have to play one. So I will play Red Squirrel now, which the owl will now steal. But now it's fine because the fox will steal a critter from the meadow, the beaver will steal a one tree card, so I might be able to block those two. So um, I will now discard a one tree, draw a card. Oh, that's a deer. That is great. I will actually play the deer because they can't do anything. And these now, because I have two, can be both moved to the forest. But that's it. I can't put anything else in the forest, so I need new trees to actually populate something. So discard the scroll. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, well, I would have to play something, right? I can't play the scrolls into that forest here, so I will have to play them in the meadow for now. And the fox will now steal that one. That's too many points for the predators. And then I will discard a card and draw another one. Rabbit, perfect. I will play the rabbit here because the rabbit is the only species that can be placed into woods with other species but only one per wood but that is fine so i got a third one here now and i will discard the scroll the beaver was never be able to steal a one tree from me because i didn't have one and now we are to on to the last round so oh a beaver again man that is really bad because i really need a third i really need a third wood with at least two trees but okay so one two three four five six seven eight so the owl will steal a critter from any wood, so it will steal my rabbit here. So that one is gone because the predators always activate at the beginning of a round. They always activate and then they always activate when I when I play a card. We don't have any critter in the meadow and we don't have a one tree. Do we have a two tree here? Yes, we do. Perfect. That's what we need. And we have two one trees. Okay, we can work with that, I think. I think we can work with that. Let me just quickly sort all of that the way I usually like to sort it. Um, there's no real reason why I sort it this way, but that's just the way I do it. There's like a specific order of animals for me. I don't know why I do it, but it works. All right, so I'll play the two tree here for sure. So now we got three, five, seven, nine. We got the 11 trees. That's great for the, I think, three extra points. Um, what do I discard? I think I will discard the deer here. Well, no, it steals only critters from a meadow. Uh, well, 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 what do we do? I think I will still discard the deer. Well, but if we got a second deer here, right? That would be pretty nice. I will discard a one tree for now. Well, no, not really. No, not really. I will discard a deer for now. I don't know if that was a good idea. Another hedgehog, okay. As long as we don't get a second deer, the one deer won't help us at all. Um, all right, so we don't have a crate in the meadow. We don't have um, one tree card yet, but I will have to play one now, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, so let me first play a rabbit in here. 
that works, right? Because I can have one rabbit in any woods, the uh, no matter the species. I will discard a squirrel for now and get a hedgehog. Okay. And then I think I can just play all my hedgehogs, right? So I will maybe not even populate that forest here anymore. If I play one hedgehog, the fox will get it. If I play a tree, the beaver will get it. It doesn't really matter what I do. But I will have to play a hedgehog because I have too many. So I will have to play one anyway. So let me start with that. Then the fox will steal it. Well, not great, but that's the way it is. And I will discard the squirrel here. Now we got the second deer, which we can't use anymore now anyway, because our, we already have three critters in the wood here. So three animals, I mean, and we can only have four. So won't matter anyway. And then I'm going to play another hedgehog and discard the deer. Um, then I will play another hedgehog. We don't have to activate any um, any predators at the moment because the beaver will just steal a one tree and I don't have one, so that is fine. Then I will discard a one tree, get another card. That's another hedgehog, okay. we will. I will just keep playing hedgehogs now. And then I'll play another hedgehog and discard the rabbit. All right, so, and now we are done. The beaver couldn't steal a one tree, but it will move to the predator pile. And now we will calculate our points. Let me get something to note that down. So let me move this hedgehog to the side here. You still should still see it. Um, actually, we don't need this one here either. So we have a little bit of room for riding. So we have the predators and we have Sir Thekas. Okay, so let's now see. So the predators is pretty simple and straightforward. We just count all the cards in the stack here. That's one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is quite a lot, actually. That's one of the highest scores for the Predator so far, I think. Um, I think the highest was 15 at some point. 14 is pretty high. I think the lowest I had was 11 or 12 at some point. That was pretty easy for me. 14 is going to be hard to reach, but let's try. So first, we count all the hedgehogs in our meadow. That is 4. So first of all, we have 4. Then we count all the... Um, critters and animals in our woods so um, what we can do is just we can just count these symbols here right the circle with the trees that's one two three four five six seven eight eight points so we have one wood with two deer and one rabbit we have another wood with a cardinal a rabbit and three squirrel so that is pretty cute so what did i say three five eight so that's another eight points so we already have 12 points i think we are making it um, then we get one point per woods. We have three woods, right? So that's another three points. That's the maximum we can get in terms of points. Then we get another three points if we have 11 trees. Two, four, six, nine, eleven. So we get another three points. And then we get bonus points depending on the number of um, types of creatures I collected, right? So we have hedgehogs. We have squirrels, we have rabbit, cardinal, that is already four critters, and we have deer. That is the maximum amount of critters, different critters we can have for the scoring table at least. So you see, if you look at the scoring table, biodiversity, you see that's for one critter we get negative one point, for two critters zero, for three we get one point, for four um, animals we get three points, and five is the maximum we got, so that is six points. That is a lot. So. Um, get another six points here and if we count all of that together we are at 12 15 18 24 points this is the highest score I have ever gotten and um, versus the 14 so we definitely won um, really won by by miles so to speak that is great um, that is really a lot I'm totally stumped at the moment because I've never had that high of a score. I think the highest I got was was something 15 to 17, something like that, I think. So that's the high score. Great that I'm just recording. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was my playthrough of Winter Haven Woods. So um, just because I don't know if I will do a review for this game yet, I have no idea because reviews are a lot of work and I'm not quite sure yet. So I'm just going to give you my first impression, at least for the solo mode, because I haven't played the multiplayer mode at, at any way, um, like I just told you at the beginning of this video. So um, first of all, the artwork is just amazing. 
It's amazing artwork. I would not say it's the most beautiful game ever, just because I think games like Parks are still a different thing, right? Um, I think Parks is one of the most beautiful games in existence, at least of the games I know and have seen in person. But Windhaven Woods is very, very close. It's definitely, I think, I would say it's in the top five of the most beautiful games that I own. And I do own quite a few games. So it's beautiful. Um, component quality, there is so much. So the component quality is just fine. The cards are good. Um, they don't have any linen finish or any like really special, but they are definitely enough for playing this game. You will see at some point when you play this game often enough, you will you will see that. Um, and I think I think I will play the game quite often because it is quite accessible. You will have to learn all the hunt and steal stuff first. That takes a little while, but if you have someone who can explain this, um, then it's quite easy actually. Um, so. I like that there's a lot of attention to detail. So first of all, the drawings are nice, the artwork, but also the back of the card, backs of the cards, as you can see, they have like this wood structure that is just wonderful. That is really great. Um, one thing I'm not really fond of is the rules, to be honest. Um, I needed quite a while to understand the game. I would say that I'm quite decent in understanding game rules because I play a lot of games, a lot of different games, especially since I have started the channel, I play a lot of different games. Well, because I want to bring you a lot of different games for the channel. A lot of those games I probably wouldn't have played myself um, if it if it hadn't been for the channel. So I'd say I'm, I am quite decent in understanding rules and I needed quite a while here. I needed to really flip the pages a lot back and forth. Um, I even wrote the designer with a question because I really wasn't sure how that worked. So the rules are not perfect, um, but when you get through the rules and you have played the game and you know how it works, I hope I did it without any errors. If the designer sees this video, please correct me in the comments if I did anything wrong. Um, but apart from that, if you know how the, how the game plays, then the game is quite accessible, really. It's really not difficult. Um, you might remember that I, I reviewed or previewed Zuli on my channel. Um, that was also a drafting and puzzle game. It was similar, Windhaven Woods. It's just like the next step up from that, right? If you want to have a very simple, you play Zuli. If you want to have a few more extra rules, um, then you play Windhaven Woods, but it's still, it has a very low weight. You can really play that with a lot of people. I would still um, classify that as a family game for sure. Um, so um, I like that, it's very accessible. It is fun, it's really like to puzzle all of that together. The solo puzzle is really great because you see all the three predators for this round. And especially if you're in the last round, you know nothing else is gonna come anymore. And then you start becoming really free in what you do. And you can kind of play around the predators and try to keep their score quite low. And I like that. I like that you have that transparency, right? You're not just um, hunting a puzzle that you possibly can't really predict um, because you do see some of the predators at least and at the end you know all the predators and that is a very very cool concept i like that it's nice i like games where you play against an ai that you can kind of control um, and you can pretty much do that here now the church bells are ringing i hope they're not too loud for the recording but that's when i recall on sundays that's always the issue here. Okay, so um, so all in all, I really like the game. It is beautiful um, component-wise. It is good. If you get into the rules, if you do understand the game one time, it is accessible. It is easy to explain. You saw how quick it is to set up. It takes a little, a little more to set up, a little longer to set up when you have your solo um, your solo stack, so I put all of the solo stuff in one stack, but if you then play in multiplayer, then you have to shuffle different stacks together, and then when you play solo again, you have to sort cards out again. So that's one thing that takes a little bit longer, but you could probably do that like in between games. You could just sort um, that stuff. So I think that's not um, the worst thing. So it's it's a good game. I really like it a lot. And this is a game that will most likely stay in my collection um, probably forever. First of all, because it's a great game, it's beautiful. And also because I have that limited copy, right? So that always makes it even nicer. So um, the design of the game, uh, I think the game is called Dino Sitters that will come out next. I'm really excited for that. If that is just as beautiful or just, just half as beautiful and has gameplay as good as this game, then I think that is something that you should definitely keep an eye out for. All right, enough rambling from my side. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough of this beautiful game 
and also you can still get it on the website so i will post a link in the description as usual because i definitely suggest this game if what you saw here if that is interesting to you all right if you're still watching thank you very much for doing so i highly appreciate every one of you watching and i also love getting in touch with you via comments um love seeing you liking my videos maybe even leaving a subscription and well maybe you will like even more of my videos my channel is full of those so why don't you take a look i'd love to see you there all right thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the very next video take care everyone and cheers